Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I've read so far in January. <laughs> This is my mid-month wrap-up for January of 2023, my first wrap-up of the year. I'm so excited. Um, we are in a new location because I have moved into the apartment that is attached to my parents' garage. So I'm currently in the moving process. Everything is moved into the apartment. Nothing is organized besides what is behind me and that's not even that well organized. So you're going to be getting a few different unique angles probably in future videos. I've already pre-filmed a bunch for January, so look forward to February content being in new spaces. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to talk about the 12 books that I read so far in January. I'm actually not going to be talking about three books in this video because they are for a dedicated reading vlog that is coming out, I believe, next week for y'all. So you can look forward to that whenever that comes out. It may or may not be uh, related to aliens in some way. <laughs> First I have Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This is the romance between Blair and Ronan and they own rivaling businesses that are kind of like neighbors. They're right next door to each other. Blair owns this cupcake bakery, um, kind of like fancy cocktail uh, shop. And then right next door is Ronan's bar. It was his grandfather's and his grandfather is kind of struggling to make ends meet at the bar. And so he's like, okay, I'll revamp it and get more business. And, and so the way that he thinks about doing that is uh, renovating it and then also putting in like an axe throwing like portion of it in the back of the bar. Their businesses are rivals, right? When they meet, they do not get along. And their grand opening is on the same day. And so they're kind of like competing for business throughout the beginning of this book. And uh, they do not get in each other's good graces at first. They then start to one up each other's businesses at any chance they can get. But obviously through this competition, they end up falling in love with each other. A bonus is they also start to fall in love with the other person's business, you know? Like at the beginning, Ronan sees um, Blair's like cupcake bakery and, she, and he's like, this is weird. And she comes into his sports bar, like holding up one of her martini glasses that's shaped as a unicorn saying like, your ax throwing shook the wall and it broke my glass. And he's like, this place full of like unicorns and pink and like what is this and then he tries one of her cupcakes and he's like mind blown he's like this is the most delicious thing i've ever had in my life and he goes into her bakery every single day just to get one of her amazing creations i was not expecting to love this one as much as i did but i loved this i gave this book five stars <laughs> i was not expecting that at all this is just a book i was smiling through the entire time i was reading it and that is one of like the best things ever when you read a book their banter in here a plus top notch i love me a good bantering relationship so this was like everything and their bantering i i i love in like enemies to lovers or rivals or like dislike to love whatever i love the bantering part in the beginning obviously when they're not like together um but i love when the bantering spans to when they are already an established couple like i love that how that spark the bantering the fun in the relationship has not died out simply because they're boyfriend and girlfriend now ronan was so sweet and hilarious <laughs> <laughs> like he plays some really funny uh pranks and jokes on Blair but there's also this grand gesture he did at the end of the book that just like immediate heart eye emoji <laughs> like I was obsessed with him I really loved this again I gave this five out of five stars for tropes it's a foodie baking romance there's great banter it's a neighbor's romance but it's unique because it's a business neighbor romance not like their home you know there is no third act breakup which is a huge huge uh gold star in my book <laughs> next i read eastern lights by Brittany c cherry this one is about connor and Aaliyah, and they both live in new york city in their early 20s one halloween night they end up bumping into each other they don't know each other they end up bumping into each other and they decide to just spend the the night together like showing each other around new york city showing them like each other's favorite places in the city just getting to know each other on a personal level and having this kind of like fairy tale magical happenstance moment with this person for just one night at the end of the night they say let fate be fate and if we end up running into each other again one day so be it but we're not going to exchange numbers or exchange names we're just gonna see how the universe takes us and so then it jumps to two years later and connor's <laughs> 
Connor is not very happy to bump into Aaliyah again to realize that she is engaged to his business partner, who is the one person in the world he absolutely hates. And he's like, how could this like women I fell in love with in one night be engaged to this horrible man. That's uh, so all I'm gonna leave you with uh, because I feel like anything else could be a spoiler. Also, this does say this is book number two in the series, uh, in the uh, Compass series. You don't have to read these books in order, like they're standalone. I will say the hero in here, Connor, he popped up in book one when he was a teenager. So it jumps to when he's in his 20s in this book. I absolutely adored the first chunk of this book when they were first meeting each other. That one night in New York City that just spanned multiple chapters. Like I loved that part of the book. However, the present day chapters um, when they're older were not my favorite. I'm sad I did not love this book as much as I wanted to. I adore Brittany Cherry's books. I give almost every single one of her books five stars. This one sadly missed the mark for me. I've just read better and other like Brittany books that have pulled more emotion from me, have made me feel more that I felt like their relationship was kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, kind of like forced a little bit, but I loved the beginning part when they were like having that one happenstance night together. Like I loved that, but it's the present day chapters, especially I think it was Aaliyah and Connor's personality changed after two years and how they changed in two years. Just, I was like, I feel like they're two entirely different people. I also personally don't like romances where one of the characters is hiding an illness from the other for personal reasons, obviously. I don't love that. And I don't like how that is a point of conflict in a book. So that's more of a me thing, a personal thing that just didn't make me love this book as much as I wanted to. So. I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read the entire Washington Wolf series by Carla Sorensen. So uh, these are three books, the first one being The Bombshell Effect. And I've heard great things about Carla Sorensen and I've been wanting to read her books. I did try the first book in her Ward Sisters series, I think last year, the year before that, called Focused, and I DNF'd it. It just wasn't feeling it. And so I was a little hesitant going into it because uh, the only Carla Sorensen I have read was focused and I did have to. So um, I did not know though that this series is the prequel series to the Ward Sisters. So this one, The Bombshell Effect, is a single dad romance. Our heroine ends up inheriting the Washington Wolves from her deceased father. She did not have a great relationship with him, um, but she ends up moving into one of his homes in Washington. And her next door neighbor, she doesn't know it yet, is going to be one of the players. And he's a single dad and she decides to be neighborly one day and bring over some cupcakes. And he thinks that she's some groupie um, coming to like hit on him or something at his house. So he like slams the door in her face. She finds that to be very rude, obviously. And they're in for shock when the day when she's supposed to meet the team, uh, he is one of the players. It's kind of like animosity. I'm so attracted to you. I can't stop thinking about you, but I don't like you. Or this is forbidding romances. I had fun reading this. I just felt like the hero was a little bit too wishy-washy for me, honestly. Like I want to read about a hero that will do absolutely anything for the woman that he's in love with absolutely anything and not keep her a secret. So I did really love his relationship with his daughter. I love the single dad aspect in here. I do think this is a great single dad romance and I will definitely put that on a new rec video for single dad romances. However, this just wasn't personally my favorite thing ever. I gave this book 3.5 out of five stars. For tropes, you have sports, a uh, single dad, it's a neighbor's romance, and it is a boss employee situation. So then I read The X Effect, which is book number two. And I just liked this one even more than book one. <laughs> so the heroine here name's Ava. Okay, I don't like how I share her name. <laughs> I don't like Ava, if you can't tell. So when Ava was younger, like like 14, she has an older sister and her older sister was engaged to her college boyfriend named Matthew. Things did not end well between the two of them. They ended up ending their engagement because he caught Ava's sister cheating on him. It's been years since then. Um, Ava is now the PR manager for the Washington Wolves um, football team and they end up getting a new player on the team and it just so happens to be Matthew. And they kind of like, Reacqu were reacquainted with each other. They get to know each other again. Ava's always had a crush on Matthew, even when they were, even when he was dating her sister, like she always had a huge crush on him and he always saw, saw her as like a little sister. But then when he comes back in contact with her again, um, he does not see her as a little sister anymore. That's for sure. I don't like romances with a bunch of lying and secret keeping. And that's mainly what this book was about. This girl was like lying about everything and keeping so many secrets just for the approval of her very crappy family. Like very crappy family. I did not like Ava in this book 
at all. I thought it was sweet how they knew each other young when they were younger and then they grew to fall in love again when they bumped into each other again. But this just was not, it was not my cup of tea. I gave this book 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then I did also read The Marriage Effect by Carla Sorensen. This one is definitely the best out of the series, I will say that. This is the romance between Logan and Paige. Paige is the best friend to the heroine from book one and Logan is one of the football players on the Washington Wolves. So both of them need to get married for their own respective reasons. Paige needs uh, to marry by the end of the year or else she does not get her uh, aunt's inheritance. Like there was a stipulation in her aunt's will. And then Logan is really scared that he's going to lose um, the custody of his four younger sisters to his very skinny um, brother. So he's like, oh, how can I make my case better to a judge or into a court? And um, he has to be married to do that. And so they get in a marriage of convenience and things take a turn when they realize that this marriage of convenience um, has a lot more feelings than they expected it to. I really enjoyed this romance. The tension between Logan and Paige in here, off the charts, I adored that. I also adored the relationship between Logan and his sisters. I love like a good family, familial relationship, especially in a good romance book. And specifically the girl's relationship with Paige, like their growth and love that they started to form with Paige was really sweet. And I now am looking forward to reading the Ward Sisters series. I already have book one on hold on Libby. So I'm crossing my fingers that I actually like the Ward Sisters series. People told me I gotta hold it out to book four though, because book four is the best, I think. So um, let me know what you thought about this series and then the Ward Sisters series in the comments, please. For tropes in here, uh, Grumpy Sunshine, Marriage and Convenience, It's a Married Couple, and It's a Sports Romance. I gave this book four to five stars. It just was not my favorite thing in the world. I've read better contemporary romances, but it was still enjoyable. So give four stars. Next, I read two Cassie Mint novellas. So first, they're both a part of the Bombshell Bride series. They're not really related in any way. They're just all about, uh, each book in the series is about a bride. Yeah. So the first one is Mail Order Vow. This was just a really short, fun, hot uh, Mail Order Bride romance. So Murray is a scarred and lonely 40 year old trying to find love. And he comes across bookworm Jessica at a Mail Order Bride agency and decides to tie the knot with her. Uh, Jessica was really cute. A shy heroine. She ends up coming to uh, Murray's home. He lives at a lighthouse because he runs, like he takes care of the lighthouse and everything. Um, so she comes to stay with him for 48 hours to see if this relationship will work out, if they actually want to get married after 48 hours or 24. I don't know. Uh, they have to stay with each other for a little bit to see if they actually want to go through with the male order bride situation. And I thought it was really fun. I really enjoyed this. And I just thought it was a sweet, delightful read. So I gave this book four to five stars for tropes. There's a male order bride, never been kissed a scarred hero and a uh, innocent hero as well. And then the other Cassie Mint novella I read is Fake Fiance, which is another one in the Bombshell uh, Brides series. I love me a good royalty romance. So this was uh, very expected. I did not know this was going to be a royalty romance. So B is our heroine and she's taking her twin sister's place during her engagement announcement to Prince Alden. So B's sister, Ophelia is uh, has been put in this arranged marriage since she was very young to Alden, a prince. Um, but her sister is very reckless and just not re very responsible, and she ends up like not showing up for the engagement party. And B doesn't want Alden to like be humiliated, so she decides to pretend to be her for the night. Um, so like he's not humiliated in front of all these guests. But then things get a little complicated when B ends up falling for Alden, and Alden ends up falling for B, who is disguised as Ophelia. And um, things get a little complicated and a little hectic. <laughs> this was a very entertaining and a really fun read. Um, for tropes, you have Hidden Identity. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's royalty and it's a novella. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I ended up reading uh, The Temptation of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. Next, I ended up reading The Temptation of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is the third book in her, what series is it called? The Midnight in Scotland historical romance series. These historical romances are so good. If you've not read these books yet, you need to. They're like historical, but they have like a pinch of um, like a fantastical, magicalness to them. So each book in the series is about a McPherson sibling. Um, so this one's about Campbell and he has been slowly pining for his brother's fiance's best friend, Clarissa, who is the heroine of this book. But he feels like he's not worthy of this beautiful, noble, like English woman. Did I mention this was a Highlander romance? It's a Highlander romance. It's a Highlander series, okay? 
I love me a good Highlander romance. But what he does not know is the sweet and very babbling Clarissa is totally falling for him as well. Clarissa lets it known that she has a previous like suitor or like lover dude um, who has become dangerous. He is a stalker to say the least and um, she has been running away from him for quite a long time. So Campbell hears about the danger that Clarissa is in and he decides to help her because he's obsessed with her in a healthy way though he's not a stalker okay <laughs> so he decides that she is going to be moving into his very small cottage with him in the highlands and man does she completely turn his world upside down she like takes over his life in the best possible ways and like redoes his entire cabin for him wants to just be with him 24 7 like love them and then he realizes like oh, he cannot keep his feelings for this woman at bay like she is amazing and he just can't he can't keep his hands off for any longer this one is definitely my favorite book in the series so far this is book number three i believe she's going to be coming out with more books in the series hopefully this book came out in 2021 and I hope all the other McPherson brothers get a book because like I'm dying for the other ones. I love a good worshiping hero and man, did this man worship the ground that Clarissa walked on. Like, oh my gosh, I am obsessed with this couple. They are soulmates and no one can convince me otherwise. Like they are everything. For trigger warnings here, there is animal death. Please be aware of that, okay? Um, and there's obviously stalking. Um, for tropes, you have books with pets, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine, a Highlander romance, a historical romance. This is a romance between a married couple because maybe he has to marry her to keep her safe when in actuality he's like finding this as the perfect opportunity to marry her. <laughs> and then this is a part of a sibling series. I gave this book five out of five stars. And the last book that I'm going to talk about for this video is Tutoring the Player by Rebecca Jenshack. I got this book as uh, the Hello Lily Boxes like trope of the month book. Like it's so cute looking. I will say that. This is a college romance. Our heroine in here, um, she is in this, what class is it? Like kind of like physics class lab um with her long time like crush that she's had in college there's this very popular like hockey player she is like totally crushed on and she just happens to be in a lab group with him and his best friend who's also on the hockey team anyway she kind of like gets to know both of them she gets to know his friend so liam is the guy she's crushing on she gets to know his friend jordan also and jordan kind of helps her and gives her like a little bit of like tips or things to say to ask out liam because he can tell that she is totally into him however the more time they like talk and spend together like jordan realizes that he's kind of like falling for daisy a little bit or like is into daisy and he's like sabotaging um what could have been between her and liam and so he decides to ask her to be his tutor in physics even though he doesn't need one um <laughs> but he really finds this as a perfect opportunity to get to know daisy more and they end up falling for each other this was not my kind of romance unfortunately if i read this in high school or early college i would probably be obsessed with this romance however i am now 24 i've been out of college for a little bit now and i am definitely not a part or have ever been in college in the sort of scene that this book takes place in i was not somebody who lived on sorority fraternity road i was not someone who attended multiple sporting events i was not someone who partied hard and went to parties and went drinking with friends i was like a loner college student who didn't have any friends okay but i had fun in my own way but this just was not my scene in college whatsoever i just felt certain aspects of this book kind of cringy because i have gone to college i know what college life is like um, I haven't experienced this certain side of college um, because it doesn't appeal to me. So part of this book did not appeal to me. <laughs> um, the heroine is super excited to go to college parties and get drunk and all this stuff and just party hard and that's just not my scene and that's okay. Everyone has their own kind of scene, you know? We have another case too of a character like lying to the other person. Um, but I feel like it was like a, a like just a tiny little lie. Like it wasn't that big of a deal and the heroine's reaction to the lie like was totally, I feel like over the top. Um, it just was not my favorite, but I feel like if I read this in high school before I experienced college myself, um, I would have loved this. However, it's just, it's, I feel like it's past my prime, you know? So if uh, you want to read an interesting college romance, 
pick this up. I gave this three out of five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are the books that I've read so far in January. I also read three other books, but I'm not going to mention them in this video today. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.